Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at solving inequalities. Now before we start solving the inequalities, let's take a look at inequality notation and interval notation. Now notice that here we just have a less than sign and it does not have an equal to. When we revert to interval notation, notice that the numbers that matters between is written in parentheses. And when we graph that, notice that I use parentheses instead of the regular open circles. Here, where I have equal to signs, notice that I'm using a bracket. Okay, That's the same as using a closed circle. And when I graph it, once again, I use the brackets that match that up. All right, here we're looking at the inequality notation and the interval notation when you have infinities. Now, notice that when I change this to interval notation, how I wrote it. Okay, let's think about why it looks like it flip flopped. Think about what this says. This is a sentence. So, this sentence, reading it from left to right, says any number that is greater than or equal to A. All my numbers that are greater than A are, are going to be on the right side if you're looking at a number line. So look, here's our number line. Here's A. And all my answers, all my solutions are greater than A. So notice how the interval notation kind of matches the graph. Notice that I have an equal to. So on my A, I use the bracket. On my infinity signs though, notice that I used a parentheses. You always use parentheses for infinities. Let's look at this sentence. This sentence says, any number, okay, my solutions are all less than A. So all my solutions are less than A. Okay, doesn't that mean, if I'm thinking about the interval notation, doesn't that mean that A is my right endpoint? That that's my biggest number that I can have. Now notice that it's technically it's not because uh, it doesn't have an equal to sign but I'm showing a limit to the right. Alright go ahead and try to write these inequality notations as interval notations. I showed the answers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright here are the solutions. I hope you got them right. Alright let's actually go ahead and start solving the inequalities. Now here I have x plus 1 is less than 5. Well, if you think as the inequality symbol, my less than, as an equal sign, you already know what to do. You would just go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides and you have x is equal to 4. Well, it's almost like that. Sometimes if you get stuck you can think of these as equal signs, even though sometimes special things do happen. So let's look at what we have here. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides just like I would normally do. I'll go ahead and bring down what I didn't touch. Notice that my 1 uh, has been moved. My less than symbol stays a less than symbol and this is a 4. My answer is x is less than, or is less than 4. Um, now if your professor is asking you to write this as interval notation, you just go ahead and switch it off. Here you have, think about it as a sentence. Your answers are less than 4. So, that means that all your answers are going to be infinitely small. And this is a parenthesis because it doesn't have an equal to. And if we graph that, I show, I always show zero. So I'm showing zero, I show four. And now I'll just do my parentheses. Okay. And I shade left. There. All right. What about here? Well, if you guessed adding six to both sides, you're correct. I'll simply add six to both sides. Bring down that X greater than or equal to 7. So notice that I can add and subtract just like I was doing before and I always bring down my symbol 
okay, exactly as it is. So, nothing new here, really. All right, what about when you start looking like this? Well, remember, if you get stuck in your head, just go ahead and think of it as an equal sign. Now here, okay, remember, you always save this term for last, the one that has your x. So, I'll get rid of that one. Here I would subtract one from both sides and I would get 2x equals to 8. Alright, so I'll do the same here. I'll subtract one from both sides and I get 2x is less than 8. So notice the steps are the same so far. Now here, I would divide by 2 on both sides. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and x is equal to 4. So it's the same thing. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x is less than 4. So nothing new, since you already knew how to do this, you can do these so far. All right? Here, let's see what happens. If I think of it as an equal sign, the first thing I would do is subtract 3 from both sides. Now, let me just remind you that okay, a lot of people make mistakes here because they think of this 3 as a negative 3, okay, and they end up adding 3 to both sides. Now, what's important is what's in front of the number. In front of the number, you have nothing, so that's just a regular 3, a positive 3. I'll subtract it from both sides. This negative belongs to that too. Okay? Notice that if I cover it up, because it's deleted now, I moved it to the other side, that's a negative 2x that I'll be bringing down. So, negative 2x equals 2. Okay, let's try the same thing on the other side. Minus 3, minus 3, negative 2x less than 2. Here I would divide negative 2 on both sides to get x by itself. So x is equal to negative 1. Here something special happens though. Here, when I, whenever you divide or multiply both sides by a negative number, something special happens to that sign. Okay, first I'll bring down that x, but instead of a less than, this will become a greater than. Your sign gets flipped. Okay, this is your answer x is greater than negative 1. Now, why does that happen? Let's look at the two problems I have so far. This says 3 is less than 8 and 5 is greater than 1. Okay, both of them are true. Now, if I multiplied this by a negative 1, let's see what happens. This says negative 3 and this says negative 8. If I just brought that symbol down, it would say that negative 3 is less than negative 8. But we know that's not true. Therefore, my sign must face the other way. Same thing here. If I multiply this by negative 2, this says negative 10, negative 2. We know that negative 2 is greater than negative 8. So this should say negative 10 is less than negative 2. So notice that whenever I multiply or divide by a negative number on both sides, my sign must be flipped to keep my inequality true. Alright, go ahead and pause the video. Try these three problems out. I'm going to show you the answers in 5, 4, Three, two, one. Alright, here are the answers. Hope you got them right.